then next we would like to discuss the modes of mixing so there is there is batch mixing and there is continuous mixing what you see here is a bee blender uh, and uh, we seem to have some uh, issues with this particular slide on the animation we will come back to this later but we will move ahead with uh, our discussion so in a batch mixing process all the materials are first charged into the mixer they are run for a specific amount of time after the mixing is completed the batch is discharged and we take on to the next batch the output of a batch mixer is measured in kilograms per batch one very important concept uh, which needs to be understood when it comes to specifying a mixer okay, is that the output is measured in kilograms per batch but the output is not defined in kilograms per batch and you want to define a mixer first okay, a mixer can only be designed for a volumetric capacity what weight you could probably load into a mixer depends on the material properties how dense the material is so that is one very important concept and when we are defining a mixer thing is that the volume the volume again the working volume is because there are two concepts which need to be understood the working volume and the gross volume so depending on the kind of mixer if it's a liquid mixer the ratio of your working volume to your gross volume will be different when it comes to a solid mixer again your uh, working to gross is different it is it is lower than what is there in the liquids and in certain cases like bee blenders it is it is still further lower so uh, very important while specifying the mixer uh, it has to be specified in terms of volumetric capacity which is going to be the working volume and then either in the case of liquid mixing using the uh, specific gravity or in the case of solid mixing using the bulk density the weight of the batch which will be charged into the mixer can be defined what are the applications uh, in which uh, we do the batch mixing so the applications where we would have the batch mixing is where our production quantities are small with one application where you require a very strict control of mix composition so typically it is in the pharmaceutical industry or the food industry uh, this becomes important so batch mixing is preferred you are able to control the mix many formulations are produced in the same line ingredient properties need to be changed and so you may have one formulation which has to be x y z you have another of formulation which is a b c but it is in the same process line that you need to change the formulation and uh, applications where you need to identify the batch for a further follow up where you know the, the importance of that particular batch is important so pharmaceutical formulations food products it is very important to identify what batch does this particular batch these are uh, the areas where we can use batch mixing different kind of batch mixers are available uh, you have you know, in, in case of liquid mixing liquid agitator vessels uh, they can be designed for batch mixing when it comes to solid mixing you have the tumbler blenders which are in most cases uh, batch mixers you have convective mixers which will be both batch and continuous we have uh, fluidized mixers again which are which are in uh, batch operation when it comes to high viscosity mixing There are certain mixers which are exclusively for batch mixing, and then there are certain mixers which are exclusively for continuous mixing. Diverging. So uh, one of the most 
primitive uh, forms of blenders. The shapes have evolved and designs have evolved. Uh, you have the deep blender, you have the octagonal blender, you have the double moon blender. So this is batch mixing and continuous mixing. Just a minute. Uh, Yeah, it, it is see, it is basically a created visualization so that the concept could be very defined. Materials are mixed. Yes. We look at a continuous mixer. Uh, the continuous rhythm blender. So in a continuous mixer, there is a continuous, you know, input. There is the material is then mixed as it moves from the charging point to the discharging point. And at the outlet, you have the mix points. So this is primarily the difference between batch mixing and uh, continuous mixing. Which tool are we using for this? Is this is uh, animation? This is this is actually which uh, there is a company which is doing these simulations, and it is from their uh, source that these videos have been uh, brought here for yes for demonstration. So, so in continuous mixing, the material flows steadily from an upstream process uh, into the mixer. As the material moves from the point of charging to the point of discharging, the mixing takes place. There is uh, a convective element, there is, there is an agitator which would cause the mixing to take place from the point of charge to discharge. The time that it takes for the material to travel from the inlet to the outlet is termed as retention time. Depending on the uh, quality of uh, mix that you desire, depending on what kind of materials are we handling, this retention time is, is critical and we have to make sure that uh, there is enough retention time for the material in the mixer for the mixing to happen. What is important here is that the weighing, loading, mixing and discharge steps, they occur simultaneously. So you have to make sure that the rate at which the material is being charged and the rate at which we are discharging the material are uh, equal uh, so that there is at any given point of time the material that remains in the mixer is more or less. In this case the output is measured in kilograms per hour as against kilograms per batch which we had in the batch mix. Where do we use the continuous mixing uh, uh, process? So where we have large quantities of single product, we have to you know, do tons and tons uh, per day or per hour. Uh, that is where the uh, continuous mixers are used. High production rate requirements. Okay. The strict batch integrity is not very great. Could allow some variations. It does happen when you have a continuous process. Uh, you have that. And in certain cases where you have, you know, multiples of batch mixers and now you want to make you know a final homogeneous mass out of those batches because it could be that you want to ship one container load of particular material make sure that they are on the same consistency. So there you could use something like a continuous mixer to even out uh, between those uh, batches. 